Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Pusha Accessoire in the Damia Ben. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workouts, go to work, let's do laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Miko Girly 99 Within your collection, which bag checks off all the marks or is perfect in your opinion? And is that bag perfect regardless of the brand? And if none, then what would you change about the best bag to make it the perfect bag? This is an awesome, awesome question. And I do have a bag within my collection that I consider to be perfect. It checks off all the marks and ends up working the best for my lifestyle. And I also wanted to share the best bag with you that if I could tweak one thing, I think it would make it the perfect bag. Uh, all right, so let's start off with the one that I currently own, and it won't be a surprise, especially if you guys have been watching my channel for the last couple of months. I've talked your guys' ear off about it. I can't seem to put it down, and that is the Chanel reissue in the 226 with the black age calfskin and the age gold hardware. I am madly, madly in love with this bag. And the reason why it's perfect for me and for my lifestyle is because it's versatile, it's comfortable, it's lightweight, it's understated, and it's still simple. And it has a whole lot of history to it. You know, I feel like if a perfect bag was made for what it is that I look for, this is definitely it. I know a lot of people don't agree with me. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of the reissue, but ever since I added it to my collection, I seem to gravitate towards it a lot, a lot more often than any of the other bags that I have. Uh, not saying that I don't like them, you know, the other ones that I, that I own, I think that they're fabulous, but in my eyes, this ends up working out uh, the very best for me and for my lifestyle. Now, as far as the best bag, um, this also won't be a surprise. And the twist that I would make is something that we have all been talking about for years or since that, since that was introduced. I'm sure you guys already know what I'm talking about. But the best bag for me is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM. And the reason why I like that bag, as many of you know, I love how comfortable it is. I love that it's a tote. I am definitely a tote girl. Um, I just like the fact that I can carry as much as I want or as little as I want. And it ends up keeping its structure. It's like I said before, it's lightweight. It just, it's a great, great bag. But the tweak that I would make, and I'm sure most of you would make this as well, is for it to be available in the monogram eclipse. I mean, come on, can you imagine how amazing that bag would be? I know that that, well, who knows? Maybe that's a possibility, maybe not, I don't think so. But to me, if they made the bag, I mean, 100% carefree and it still had the same silhouette by having the monogram eclipse, I think it would be perfect. I know that they have the world tour available and you can go for the monogram with the black straps, but I personally just like this combination a lot more because I also feel that it's still somewhat understated because it's not as loud as the monogram. I'm a big fan of the monogram. Please don't, um, please don't uh, misunderstand that. But I just, I don't know, there's just something about this monogram eclipse. So if they had a Neverfull MM in the monogram eclipse and they had this type of leather for, um, you know, for how carefree it is, I mean, can you imagine? I think <laughs> I would be the first person in line. I think it would make the bag 100%. 100% perfect in my eyes. So <laughs> that's the one that I would end up choosing. The Neverfull if I could, but when it comes to the ones that I currently own um, or just in general, it would be the reissue. So it's not perfect because it's Chanel. It's perfect because of the function that it has for me and for what I go for. So this is it. But I would love to know, do you have a perfect bag in your collection? And if so, what makes it perfect? And if you have a best bag, not a perfect bag, what are the things that you would change to make it a perfect bag. I said that correctly, right? I don't know. <laughs> hopefully I did, but fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from EC. What do you think of the Louis Vuitton favorite? I want something in the Azure print and I'm thinking about getting this one. I heard that the magnetic closure can come open and all your stuff can fall out. Thoughts? All right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of the Louis Vuitton favorite right now.
I think this is such a beautiful bag. I love the versatility that it has. I love the silhouette that it has. I also like the price point and it also ends up holding its resale value very, very nicely. Uh, so I think that's great. And from what I have personally seen, I actually think that the magnetic closure is quite strong uh, because it's not one of those bags that you barely touch it and everything ends up falling out. So like I said, in my experience, I haven't really seen it be too, um, too flimsy. It is, uh, it is pretty strong in my opinion. Um, now, the reason why I have never added a favorite to my collection, once upon a time I went into the boutique, I tried it on, and I was really stoked about adding it to my collection, but I didn't really like where it landed on my frame because I felt that it was a little, um, I felt like I overwhelmed the bag, and every time I opened up the flap, it always ended up hitting my chest. So that was something that uh, I wasn't too crazy about. And also, I want something a little bit more secure when it comes to something that I'm gonna use crossbody. Like I said before, the, uh, the favorite is very versatile, so you can use it as a little handbag on your shoulder if you wanted to. Uh, but the thing that I liked about it the most is the fact that I could use it crossbody and I just wasn't too crazy about not having um, a little bit more security. I want something that has a lock. I want something that has a zipper just because it gives me a little bit more peace of mind. Um, but uh, I think it is a beautiful, beautiful bag nonetheless. And every time I see it, I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just unfortunately not for me or for my lifestyle. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Carolyn Kim. I'm currently using a Louis Vuitton key pouch as a wallet and I would like to venture into Chanel for the first time ever. The price for the classic zip coin purse and the small pouch are the same. For work, I have large bags, but otherwise I have small, small bags, such as the Dionysus Super Mini and the Saint Laurent wallet on chain, and I use my key pouch in there instead of, the, instead of using the slots because I like to use and move my phone, wallet, etc. from bag to bag easily. Which one would you recommend? Um, all right, so you are thinking between the classic zip coin purse and the small pouch, and I brought both of those out so we have a little bit more eye candy. So here is the zipped coin purse and the small pouch. I absolutely love them both. Um, as many of you know, I do end up using this pouch mostly as a wallet just because I really like the size. I like the fact that it's a little bit more slender than this one, it's not as bulky, and it also doubles as a catch-all, which is really, really nice. Uh, so I guess it comes down to what it is that you carry in your wallet. For example, if you carry you know, um, anywhere from 10 plus cards and you wanna have um, a few different compartments, then I really recommend going for the small zipped coin purse. I like the fact that it has those dividers. And when it comes to wallets in general, this is by far my all-time favorite silhouette. I just really like the fact that it's um that it's compact it fits uh everything that a large size wallet has and it's also not too too bulky however if you see yourself carrying a little bit less and maybe you want something that's just a tad more versatile then i would recommend going for the pouch because like i said before i do often use it as a catch-all as well but i just prefer to use it as uh, as a wallet and it still ends up um i'm still able to maximize my space inside of my smaller handbags whenever i go to use this guy so if you're strictly talking about a wallet uh then i would recommend going for this guy but if you want something that has a little bit more play, a little bit more versatility, then I would end up going for the pouch. So I don't know if this is helpful, but congratulations on your soon to be first Chanel piece and I'm super excited for you, but fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Vicki Basham, hopefully I said that correctly. I would love to know which Louis Vuitton agendas you have and what you do about calendar refills each year and how you use it. Um, all right, so before I started the video, I actually cleaned these out because I am a mess when it comes to my agendas. But uh, I currently have two uh, Louis Vuitton ones in the GM size. I have one in the Damien Ben and one in the Monogram Canvas. And uh, I like to switch them out uh, every year. So last year I was using this one, so this year I'm using the Monogram one. Um, and when it comes to the, uh, the refills, um, I usually end up going for the Louis Vuitton ones. And uh, for Christmas, I was actually gifted the agenda refill. So that was really, really nice. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I do like the uh, the Louis Vuitton ones, however, um, usually I don't have enough space to write down what I want to write down. Uh, so like on here, you have, you know, you have a few lines, and I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person that I like to have as much information as possible. So sometimes I will have other papers in between 
in between these pages with like post-it notes. Like I said, I am a complete, complete mess. It is never this clean. Uh, and I have a few other dividers in here. Like this one was gifted to me a few years back and I absolutely love it. Um, I have a few pages in here for my videos. I have a few other pages for everything else that I need for work. But I am telling you, I have literally post-its everywhere, pages everywhere, and <laughs> it's not very organized. Uh, but um, I get a lot of questions, especially on Instagram, as to why I've never done, you know, like what's in my agenda or how I organize my agenda because it's not very organized. However, there is a method to my madness. You know what I mean? Are you guys like that? And I also go for the... Um, the Agenda GM Notes. Those are just plain pages. I have a few boxes of those. I got them uh, a couple years ago and I've still been able to, to hold on to the majority of them. But um, I'll go into like Staples, Office Depot. If I can find a few different uh, pages that end up fitting the agenda, I'll just go for those as well. So it's not necessarily always about Louis Vuitton. Um, I just I don't know, I am like a stationary freak. One of my favorite places is like Office Depot and Staples. I just love like pens and paper clips and paper. I don't know, I don't know what it is, all right? I've been like this my entire life. I was the girl in school that had the coolest pencils in the classroom, all right? So <laughs> that's just a little bit about me. But um, yes, Louis Vuitton agenda refills or um, if I, if I find some really cute ones, I also go for those. So if you guys have any recommendations for some really cute agenda refills or papers or whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. I know um, I have also scoped out Etsy and they have some awesome, um, some really awesome sellers on there as well. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Leticia Gutierrez. Hopefully I said that correctly. Why haven't you decided to add a Valentino bag to your collection? Do you think that the Valentino Garavani lock shoulder bag is no longer a classic? Before I get any further, let me insert a picture of the lock bag right now. I think this is a beautiful bag and I 100% think that it is a classic to the fashion house. Now the reason why I haven't added any Valentino bags to my collection, the lock bag is actually one that I've gone back and forth on for the last couple of years. I add it to the wish list, I take it off, I add it to the wish list, I take it off because I really like the silhouette, I really like the design and some of the details, but this is where the 50 Shades of Crazy comes in. As much as I like it, I have a feeling, I have a gut feeling that it would end up being a for now bag for me. It wouldn't end up being a forever bag. And I also get the feeling, call me crazy, I have a feeling that I won't end up using it as much as I think I would. And I know that I'm totally judging it and I shouldn't do that, but I just can't seem to shake that feeling, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm trying to go with my with my intuition on this one. And anytime I haven't listened to my intuition, it's always come to bite me in the butt. So that's why I'm holding off on it. And um, unfortunately, they don't end up holding their resale value as well. And uh, to me, resale value is important. That's something that comes into play, especially with the price points of these bags. So if I was to go for one, I would go on the pre-love market for it. Um, you know, they have some beautiful, some beautiful bags on the pre-love market and they have great prices as well. Uh, but I don't know. I just have a feeling that I wouldn't be able to justify the price either pre-loved or brand new because I don't think I'd use it. And I think I would probably, um, I'd maybe use it for like a month or two and then um, that would be the end of it. I know that I would end up losing money on it in the long run. So maybe that's what ends up holding me off. I don't know, but I think it is a beautiful, beautiful bag. Like I said before, I have gone back and forth a million times with it. Uh, but uh, I'm just gonna have to listen to my gut instinct on this one for sure. But I think that they are beautiful nonetheless, and if it speaks to you, then by all means, go for it. So fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Teresa Marie. I'm thinking of purchasing an anniversary gift for a 10 years, and I was thinking of a timeless watch, maybe Movado. Any suggestions on other brands that aren't too crazy expensive? Uh, well, first and foremost, major congratulations on your 10-year wedding anniversary. I wish you guys a world of happiness. Um, all right, so for a different, uh, different kinds of watches, I really like the Movado. I like Movado, especially their Bold Edition, uh, just because it's very sleek, it's very simple. But then again, anytime we're talking about Movado, I like the simplicity that they have. Um, another one that I would suggest if you want to go a little bit higher uh, in price point from Movado, uh, definitely check out Michelle watches. You guys have seen this one on many of my videos. This is the Michelle Extra Large Diamond Deco watch. I don't believe they make the extra large anymore. 
um, but they have other um, they have other sizes and I really love the craftsmanship of Michelle watches I've had this for going on four years if I'm not mistaken and it has worn insanely well I've had no issues whatsoever and if you do end up going for one with diamonds um, I haven't had a single diamond fall off and I am somewhat rough when it comes to my watches uh, so I highly suggest going for um, or I highly recommend going uh, to check out Michelle watches and if you want something a little bit higher priced than the Michelle watch um, one of my favorite timeless pieces uh, time pieces is the Cartier tank watch Uh, but I think that that watch is beautiful. It's not too oversized. It's not too small. I think it's such a beautiful, such a beautifully crafted uh, timepiece. So I would also uh, recommend checking that one out. But whichever one you go for, I mean, the fact uh, that you are getting it for your 10 year, it's always going to have that sentimental value. So I am super excited for you. I can't wait for you to, uh, to pick out a timepiece. And whichever one you go for, I would love for you to let us know which one you chose. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Kay Michaels. I'd love to know what your dream bag is. If money wasn't an object, it can be a bag or a rare small leather luxury good and why if possible. Um, all right, so if I had the financial possibility to make my dream bag a reality, hands down, hands down, it would be a Chanel classic flap completely 100% covered in Swarovski crystals. I mean, <laughs> I think that bag would, me would be me to a T. I have seen some of them with the Strauss crystals at the boutiques and they are just gorgeous. They've had some, you know, like past seasons, they're light blue, purple, pink. They've had all, all these different colors, right? But I just think it would look insanely, insanely gorgeous. And trust me when I say this, I would use it every single solitary day. So it have to be, it have to be made in a in a, in a way that the the crystals don't fall out, so that I can wear it every single day for sure, <laughs> for sure. I mean, no question, no doubt about it. Um, when we were at the boutique like years and years ago, and I saw them, they were I believe that they were the medium size, if I'm not mistaken. I know that you can they have them in different sizes, but the ones that I saw were medium. And I think the price point was like 16,000 or 14,000 or something like that, you know. But it, it was just absolutely one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. So I think that describes <laughs> that describes my dream bag to a T, considering my personality. However, I would love to know, if you had the possibility to make your dream bag a reality, what would that be? If you want to, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Lori T. I noticed that many YouTubers, especially luxury ones, make disclaimers before they start a video to tell people that if they don't wanna watch that type of video, to exit out. What are your thoughts on this? I have yet to see one of your videos that does this. Um, I actually think I have maybe one or two videos out there that do have disclaimers. Um, one of them was from like way back when, and that ended real, real quick, you know? And um, I personally don't like disclaimers, and to each their own. If it makes a, if it makes a YouTuber more comfortable, to say that, then by all means go for it. But um, I refuse to make any disclaimers. And the reason I say that is because I feel that if someone is, if someone has no interest whatsoever in the topic that you're gonna be discussing, if they see the thumbnail, if they see the title and they still click on it, and then they hear that disclaimer, I don't think it's going to deter them from continuing to watch it, especially if it's someone that's there to say something nasty or if they have, like I said before, no interest in the topic, I don't think it's going to make them change their mind. I think they're still gonna watch it. I really don't think that they care. So it's like, okay, why even entertain the thought? Just if the YouTuber wants to talk about something, if they want to discuss something, if they wanna make a video about it, that's all that matters. You know what I mean? So I pay no attention to the negativity. I focus on the positive and I just have those cameras keep rolling, you know what I'm saying? So to each their own and like I said before, if it makes that person feel more comfortable, then by all means go for it. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. However, before I let you go, let's discuss what it is that I'm wearing because the shirts became a reality. <laughs> I am so, so excited. I've been wanting to do these t-shirts for about a year now, and I did discuss it a few weeks back that I was kind of in the works about possibly getting these out, and they became a reality. So it has my slogan on here. It says, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. It has a fleur-de-lis because you guys know I do have a fleur-de-lis 
actually uh, tattooed on me and I am just like literally super super excited I am grinning like an idiot from ear to ear because I feel like this is a step in the right direction you know what I mean uh, but let me tell you guys a little bit about the t-shirts because they are available I will make sure and put the link on the description box below if you guys want to check them out they are available in um, three different colors the red that you see here it's probably showing up a little bit more vibrant um, however it's uh, it is a heathered red so it's not necessarily as bright it's also available in black as well as white. They do fit true to size. I am wearing a medium. However, they are a blend, so um, it does have a little bit of a drape to it, so that way it has a little bit more of a relaxed look to it, because you guys know I live for t-shirts. I live in t-shirts. That's just something that I really, really like. And they also have Minx for All um, on the sleeve here, but I am just so, so excited for, you know, for this. And I can't thank you guys enough for being with me all these years and joining me on this journey with these teas and uh, I still have a few ideas for a few others especially uh, when it comes to uh, whatever makes your heart sing I also want to get that out because you guys know I also say that quite quite often I also made sure to have worldwide shipping because a lot of you guys that are part of my YouTube family my Instagram family don't live in the United States so that to me was very important to be able to have that but uh, I am stoked I am super super stoked to say the least you guys can tell by the look on my face right uh, but again Again, I will make sure to put all the information on the description box below. Now for this week's lineup, I think I might end up doing a review on the reissue because I've talked to your guys' ear off about it within the last couple of months and I haven't done a proper review on it, so I think I might uh, end up doing that. I will try to shoot for one more video this week, but like I said, um, usually January is really, really crazy, but I will try my hardest nonetheless. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week, and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.